Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. And we have another exciting session with our love coach, Michelle Fabrica. Where are we going today, John? <laughs> Why are you asking me, Art? This is Michelle's well, you're, you're, specialty. You're in, you're, in charge of, you're in charge of these segments. Well, I do love our love coach. I have to admit, Michelle, As you've been giving, us, been giving us great advice. Um, we talked, we did two videos on uh, spicing up your relationship. But um, you said that you had another tip, and that's the title of this one, which is planning uh, your sensual and sexual adventures. Now, for me, the planning is the hard part. The adventures is the good part. Uh, <laughs> but where do we begin? Where, where do we begin planning our sensual and sexual adventures? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, as we all know, if we want to be successful, we need to make a plan. So that's why there's always kind of a preamble or a kind of a meta conversation to have first. So what I really want to invite people to do is make some time where they can be alone and uninterrupted to talk about what they want. So this is sort of the first part. And, you know, basically, if you aren't willing to make the time for this, that's a good time to get curious as well. Like, basically, what do you want to be experiencing in your life sensually and sexually together? How important is this to you? Do you want, are you happy with the way things are? Would you like things to be different? Would you like to um, expand what you're doing together? And it's really about coming together to first kind of have this conversation and is it a priority and do we want to make time for this in our life? And um, that's part of the kind of foreplay, if you will, to just to talk about, is this important? Yes, hopefully we're both on the same page around that. And if so, then totally proceed. And if not, there's something maybe to look further about that and um, see how you can resolve maybe that difference. Yeah. So, so it's, it sounds like you can't just start cold turkey, if you will. Yeah. Well, you totally can. And so this is more like if it's been a while or you're kind of like, oh, I don't know, and maybe one person is a little hesitant and it's like, well, it doesn't feel the same way as before. And I don't know if I want to do these activities, but, you know, so if we're kind of just kind of getting going again in some way or you want to pick it up a pay yeah. pick up the pace yeah well, I, I do like the word foreplay <laughs> <laughs> I can't and i and i, I like the fact that you believe in the plan the plan <laughs> the plan the plan um so foreplay just talking about it can be foreplay can't it yeah yeah and even just um and like i said even we talked about being spontaneous but i mean it's important to plan and it's important to even schedule time for this because we don't always have this, this space to be thinking about it. It's good to anticipate it, right? So these are all part of it. All right. So we plan, we make time, we plan, we talk about it. But what are the sexual and sensual adventures and, and the difference between sensual and sexual? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I like to encourage is to make, kind of make, once you've had this conversation and you're both on board, you want to do this, to make a, a plan, a date for a sensual sort of exploration together. And when I say sensual, I, I don't necessarily exclude things that are sexual, but I really, I think it's important to make time to just look in this full, there's so much to be explored sensually, just through touch, different pacing, different pressure, head to toe, all over your body, uh, not just the genitals, which is what we generally often focus on in, when we're being sexual, but our whole bodies. And, and yet don't avoid the genitals too, because there's a lot of sensual touch that can be um, very pleasurable in those areas. So it's really about taking turns. This is what I suggest, take turns, maybe give one person to receive about say 30 minutes and the other person is just offering loving touch to their partner. And I like to think of it as like, you know, if you're using your hands or other body, body parts, but thinking of like actually delivering love through your fingertips and you're sort of loving them through, you know, not with words, but with your hands and body. And it, it's, you know, it's, like I said, long strokes, short strokes, maybe tapping, maybe different things, maybe different toys, feathers, different ways to, to touch another person's body, maybe scratching their head or brushing their hair or using 
you know, a silk scarf or whatever. And it's just about the, the receiver's only job is to receive and give feedback. If like, oh, that doesn't feel good. Or, oh, I want you to go slower. Or, oh, actually, my, uh, my knee needs a little more attention. Would you, you know, put your hands on there? So it's kind of like the, the person receiving just guides it and yet otherwise just enjoys and receives. And also maybe might suggest things like, oh, can you go slower in between my toes? Or um, I want you to, you know, cut my balls and just squeeze and just hold for a little bit. Just, you know, stop moving for a moment, whatever it might be. And just, you know, this can be repeated many times, but this exercise is just to kind of get to know each other again, fresh. And then, of course, you switch and then the other person um, gets to be the receiver. That's interesting. And I would imagine that uh, after uh, a long relationship, people will find things that they used to do and used to like um, that they forgot about. Absolutely. Yeah. And also our bodies are always changing. Like, And so some things might not have been as pleasurable before, or maybe we like a different kind of touch than we used to. And um, it's good to kind of get current on what our bodies love in, in this, where we are now. Maybe certain areas we have some injuries, like this part doesn't feel good, maybe avoid that. My skin is sensitive here, please don't touch there. But this feels good, you know, so it's, it's good to, to learn. Keep learning. Yeah. Um, so the sexual, the sensual is the touching. Yeah. And the sexual adventure is is take me through that because everybody has a different idea yeah of what they find sexual absolutely yeah yeah so and that's like i wouldn't presume to 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 know the exhaustive possibilities that are out there and so <laughs> this is kind of like you get to discover this together right but what i the reason i like to start with the sensual part is that that kind of can really awaken the body i think i mentioned this before there's spontaneous desire, and then there's um, responsive desire. And so spontaneous desire just happens, we feel aroused, but spontaneous desire, as far as responsive desire is a response to the body kind of getting awakened. And when we take time for this sort of sensual exploration, you're gonna feel more in your body, you're gonna feel more in the present moment. Most likely your mind has quieted down and you're not thinking about things you're stressed about. And so you're kind of like, uh, maybe ripening towards wanting to be more sexual. And it doesn't mean you have to be sexual in this particular encounter. It might be like, oh, let's just enjoy this feeling and that's fine. Or from there, you might want to decide to be more sexual and whatever that might mean to you, whether it's, you know, like stroking each other's genitals or intercourse or um, like I said, anal exploration, whatever that might be, might, might feel good to you. You know, different lubrication, try stroking each other in different ways. Um, but, but the one, the other point I want to make about it is to actually spend another time like thinking about it and planning, which is about what are the things you'd like to each try and maybe come up with, you know, all the sexual activities that you've done in the past that you'd like to do again, or things you've never done that you want to try and your partner, you make your list and then you decide, you know, oh, that's a yes, or maybe, uh, no, no, not right now, you know, and so you kind of come together. We're trying to make, get creative here and expand the field of possibilities. So, so it I, sounds... what, what, I, what I'm hearing from you is that what you're saying is that as long as you're taking care of the other person's feelings, that almost nothing is off limits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you need to be comfortable with it too, right? And so as long as, you know, we're two consenting adults, whatever feels good to the two of you. So the word adventure uh, sticks in, in the back of my head because it says you're going to try something different. And is part of this uh, exploring and going on an adventure, is that mean we have to try something different? In other words, uh, we've been doing the same old thing for a long time. Do I have to, I, I don't like porn, but now I'm going to try porn. Is that something we, we need to do? Uh, well, experiment. It's Experiment. I mean, I love experiments. I think experiments are underrated in life. I think it's always good to be stretching a little bit, trying something new. Um, certainly if something is, you know, really aversive to you, you know, that's not the thing to explore. But if your partner's really like, let's say they want to try some role play or they want to try some, you know, bondage and or submission or domination, something around that. It's like, you know, 
why not venture into something new? See what it's like. You know, you might have thought you had a judgment about it or you had a bad experience from the past. Um, you know, that's something to honor and maybe there needs to be some attention to that, some healing, whatever about that. Totally, totally valid and, and, and reasonable. And yet it's also like, well, what about here and in, in the here and now? And sometimes that can be really fun to, to play together in that way. So I, I just, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's at the user's discretion, but I invite people to experiment. Yeah, so experiment, but you don't have to break any of your personal I don't, what the restrictions or things you know you're uncomfortable with. You don't have to do that. So for John, not, for, yeah. for John and I, we might want to try, for instance, and I know that John likes this, dressing up as a nurse. And <laughs> I could be dressing up as a dominant or however you pronounce that, because I know I'm a little uncomfortable doing that. So, John, we we have things we can talk about. You know, you know, Art, this, we're not running a, a a a love boutique here. We're we're trying to talk to adults. This I'm is, just saying. I'm just saying, John. I'm I'm listening. I'll go get that nurse's outfit. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, it might seem a little campy or corny and like, yeah, and, and still try it anyway. Why not? You know, yeah. role playing, dressing up, different things. It can be, um, sometimes it can be silly and like, well, that was, you know, or maybe something is like a real turn off. It's like, oh, no, I definitely don't want that creeps me out. You know, I, I don't want to do some schoolgirl thing or, you know, whatever. I'm just making it up. But, sure. you know, that's OK. And so you learn. It's kind of like you're learning your sexual landscape. Yeah. And you're learning each other's sexual landscape. And you never know. You might suddenly come into something, discover some corner. You know, you're going down the river together and you look, wow, we both love doing this kind of thing together. Yeah. And um, who knew, right? Unless you explore it. Yeah. And, and you know what? It reminds me of one of your previous videos about um, uh, sexuality or uh, 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 spicing up your relationship where you talked about playfulness. Yeah, playfulness is important in this too. Planning your adventures. If it's, I mean, I think of an adventure. When when you just say the word adventure, I think of vacation, going on vacation. Mm. And you sit down. And think, are we going to going to fly there or we're going to drive there? And what are we going to do when we get there? Um, that's a great analogy for sex, quite frankly. And now that I think about it, but planning is involved and it's playful. Go yeah, and, and it, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go, go, go. Ahead. Well, I was going to just say that it can be like um, it, I like to think of it as like being an explorer, you know, and or a buccaneer, or you know, whatever term you like to use. But <laughs> it's sort of um, it's it's curious, it's discovery, it's learning. It might be something like, oh, that was so well, that was funny. You know, you'll laugh about it later, maybe, and that's okay. Yeah. The main thing is just to stay really connected with each other and listening to each other like make because if you're trying some new things you you also need to be cautious that your if your partner starts to check out or starts to feel like you're not they're not responding to you that's something to pause you always yeah. want to be listening um you know listening deeply to each other and paying attention because you never know you could stumble on something that could have been something um traumatic that might have happened in the past so i mean yeah. it's not that likely, but you never know. So you really want to make sure you're tuning into each other and pausing along the way. And certainly if you want to get into role play and, you know, domination, submission, you know, you want to have some safe words, um, different ways to, to explore safely, basically. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me, uh, this is a great video. Uh, and it is, it's an important part of bonding, a couple bonding, uh, it will come out of it no matter what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. And if, yeah. If, if people want to uh, learn more about um, uh, the facilities that you can help provide to people, you're, you're being a love coach, but just more information about this topic, they can go to www. Yeah, michellefabrica.com. Great. Yeah. yeah. Great. And it also just, these are all just invitations. And if like, if you're listening and thinking, there's no way I could even bring this subject up or I'm so uncomfortable with these ideas, you know, that's okay too. That's okay to honor that. However, if you'd like to move through some of these things and like, wow, we're kind of limited myself, but I don't know how to get to this other way of being more free with my sexuality. That's something to, you know, get some support around because sometimes it's, um, it's challenging. We've had a lot of conditioning in our lives that 
thinks certain things are okay and certain things aren't, you know, good girls don't or whatever, even at, you know, the second half of life, we can still be, um, find ourselves limited in some way and, or feel limited. If we don't feel limited, then we're good, you know, but if you want to get past some of these things, it's good to get some support. Great idea. Great idea. And that's what the love coach is for. Right. So thank you very much, Michelle, for uh, and all of our conversations with you, bringing up things that people are interested in, but are, are perhaps oftentimes uncomfortable, unless they have a way to hear about it from uh, a source that they weren't originally intending to by watching uh, you uh, in the series that you're contributing to celebrating Act Two uh, and our audience uh, as our love coach. So we thank you much for that and look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Michelle. Thank you. And we, we welcome your comments and suggestions. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thank you.